What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic and we're back with the final results for the AI challenge. Now, I realized a few issues when I was doing this challenge. Uh, number one, I wasn't very specific on the rules. I, I tried to be as concise as I could. Um, but I didn't really have all the rules laid out. I've learned a lot about how to structure this a little bit better. And for the next challenge, I'm actually going to explain to you guys how I'm going to be testing the vehicles and, uh, and what criteria I'll be using for evaluating if it's a success or a failure. Uh, but in the meantime, we've gotten a lot of submissions. I mean, you guys are absolutely amazing. I honestly thought when I first did this challenge that I wasn't going to get very many submissions at all. And uh, I actually built a very, very simple AI to, to complete this challenge. But uh, you guys went crazy, and uh, some of them are absolutely insane. I mean, some of them are just, just absolutely crazy on how you guys came up with, with doing it. For example, this one here, uh, this one by Memed Moombo Person, uh, I believe is the, the Steam name. And uh, this one really, I mean, this is possibly the, the fastest fastest AI I think could have done I mean we're, we're gonna have to get out of the way here but look at this this is insane I mean totally totally disqualified and completely useless really as you can see here just a ton of different creations from all you guys really there were three ways I noticed people solve the problem and uh, the first way being the way I solved it as well which was just having uh, two sensors or three sensors or five sensors or whatever, but two sets of sensors one on either side sensing either of the two walls and just kind of reading the wall positions and uh, and sort of turning your vehicle away from the walls when it encounters them. The other was this method here where uh, you have one sensor, which I've done in logic bots as well, and basically this one sensor follows the edge of the one side. So it always, the robot always steers into the one edge and then when this sensor goes off the one edge, it steers back. And there were a few people who did that kind of method. Uh, there was also this one here, which is kind of cool, which is two sensors and the edge rides right in between them. But uh, overall, I was super impressed with uh, with the turnout and I actually didn't make the fastest robot. I'm definitely gonna have to step up my game for next time and uh, go join the discord like I said before and check out what's in the chat but uh, we're gonna get into these creations. So the first group I'm not gonna really run through them all very much but these are the ones that I couldn't get to pass the course. So I gave because there's so many creations here like there's you know there's a ton of them here we can see um, I gave each one three attempts to pass the course and uh, I would I would go with it and I would try it three times and uh, and see what they would do and these were all the ones that after three attempts couldn't pass the course now I'm gonna throw it out there that most of them failed on this vertical wall that vertical wall seemed to be the great equalizer this one here is my vehicle um, very simple like I said I everyone went really complicated this is a very very simple vehicle and uh, these three I'm gonna call special vehicles now Originally in the competition when we were going through the rules, uh, I wasn't really clear on whether or not you could build a vehicle that gripped the sidewall. And uh, I think initially I just said, yeah, sure, it doesn't really matter. But these three, uh, so this one here in the front by Brent Batch, this one in the middle by Chris, and this one in the back here by Batska, um, they, they were very, very fast. And so they got times of like 31 seconds, 31 seconds, and like 40 seconds. And they surprisingly weren't the fastest vehicle, but uh, the incredible speed that these have just kind of made me think, okay, I, uh, I probably shouldn't allow them in the competition because they, they were just way too quick and uh, they really were an unfair advantage to, the, uh, to the, the straight ones. But they are in order here, so first, second, third. Uh, just based on the the uh, the speeds in their own sort of little, you know, gripping division, we'll call it. This one here in the left, this one's by YT underscore Blue Flame, and uh, it was actually one of the fastest. So we're just gonna we'll just move it over here for now. And so we're not we're not gonna say what time it got, but it was one of the fastest. Uh, this one here by Paparazzi or Paparitza, I believe. Um, two minutes twenty two seconds. It was pretty quick, but uh, not definitely not the fastest. Uh, this one here by Al Magma. This one I really liked. It was really cool. And the reason why is... Okay, you can't see it. But the reason why is it would actually adjust the pistons uh, in and out to scan for the size of the edge. So it would kind of always keep the sensors on the outside of the edge. Really cool. But uh, not very quick there at uh, 2 minutes and 2 seconds. This one here, really cool, Musta Simpanzi. I, I hope I said that right, but uh, 
pretty quick robot and uh, actually one of the top five. I'm not gonna mention too much about it. Now, I will say this about this one. Uh, there was a particular person who did copy this one and rip it off. There was also another one that was copied and ripped off. Uh, it's very obvious when you've copied a design, I mean, you, you took this design and there were just some aesthetic changes, but really it was the exact same design. It worked the exact same way. And on top of that, when you watch them drive, it's very rare in Scrap Mechanic, you'll have two vehicles drive the exact same way, but uh, they drove the exact same way. So I instantly knew that it was a copy because I can check and see who uploaded it to the workshop first. So all I'm going to say is if I did catch you copying, I caught two people, I eliminated any designs you had submitted. If you submitted multiple designs, I didn't care. I, uh, I eliminated them both because uh, it's not cool to plagiarize and copy other people's work. All right, so the fifth car that I've got here is uh, this one's by Nash. I, I really like this one. It was, it was pretty quick, uh, did a good job, but uh, one minute, 27 seconds, not part of the top five. Uh, this one over here, like I said, really cool. The uh, the sensors would keep the line right in the middle of it by Mike Reations. And uh, this one, not the fastest again, 2 minutes and 45 seconds. The, um, the ones with a single sensor, generally speaking, are slower. They have to turn into the wall, then turn away, then turn in, then turn away. They're not nearly as quick. Uh, this one here by Loplop42. And uh, not one of the fastest, but definitely a really, really good one, really quick. Uh, at 53 seconds, so that was pretty good. This one here, also really cool, nice and compact. This one was really cool because when it got to a corner, it would stop and it would think. So these two sensors on pistons, it would stop when it hit a corner. These ones would extend out until it saw the wall and then it would adapt to the wall. So it was really interesting that it would kind of almost think at every corner. Uh, and this one was by Chessmaster42. And not the fastest again uh, at 44 seconds. So you can see there the competition really was quick. So we go to the back here uh, to another row and uh, another one of these single sensors. I think it goes that way. And uh, this one was by Scrappy. Um, it actually was Scrappy with then a bunch of like uh, emoticons, I guess, or something or symbols. I'm not sure. But anyways, it was a bunch of squares, but Scrappy. And uh, this one is uh, again another single sensor, so not as fast at three minutes and four seconds. Uh, this one here by Wright.Danny. This one's pretty cool, uh, very tall, but it pivoted really well. And uh, this one wasn't one of the fastest at 52 seconds. This one's by Demon Rend. These are some interesting Steam names you guys come up with, but Demon Rend uh, seemed to work pretty well. I really appreciated having a passenger seat to, to ride on it. It was really convenient, but uh, still not one of the fastest at one minute and 31 seconds. This one was pretty cool uh, by Lord Payne. Uh, really impressed with this ring of sensors. So what he did is he put these sensors on an angle on a bar. And so if you were to draw a line out of each of these sensors, he's technically able to sort of read the distance to the corner. So you can tell how far the corner is ahead. Uh, but just really, really crazy stuff. Although it seems like all three of these sensors in the middle, oh no, they're connected, just a couple of them. But anyways, this one by Lord Payne, and uh, it is one of the top five. All right, and in the final row, we've got uh, we've got three more. So this one by Mini, uh, very similar to what I did, it seems, except six wheels instead of instead of four. And uh, this one actually wasn't the top five, so we're not gonna uh, we're not gonna talk too much about it. This one here by Sales, I think it's it's S at signed L E S S, so maybe it's it's sat I. Sales? I always call it sales. I don't know. If I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments down below. But uh, this robot, pretty cool, pretty compact. Again, using multiple sensors to kind of get multiple angles. And uh, this one was uh, in the top five. This final one here, this one's by Icebound Glacion. And uh, pretty cool robot. Very similar with the, just the two sensors, one on either side. But uh, one minute and 29 seconds. So it did not make it into the top five. Five. We're gonna actually start with mine because it's nothing to write home about and so hopefully we'll be able to get a, uh, a good run in here. So when I was actually testing these vehicles, uh, I was using a timer built into my phone to check the times and so I'm gonna keep using that 
phone timer, but uh, I'm also going to overlay a timer on the video for you guys as well. So if the timers don't line up and I say something that doesn't necessarily match the timer, it should be pretty close, but I'm only going to go to the nearest second because, uh, yeah, I'm not going to, it's not going to be accurate enough. But I am going to take the phone timer as the master if, uh, if there is a, a, a close call. All right, so here's my bot. And uh, three, two, one, go. So my bot, you can probably tell, uh, it, it works very, very simply. All it's doing is just reading the edge of the wall where the tire is. And uh, if the sensor, you can see there, yeah, if the sensor, yeah, see it even drives off the edge. It doesn't really care. But the sensor's basically lined up right with the front corner of that wheel. So if the wheel lose, leaves the ground, the, uh, the sensor reacts and turns it around. But you can see there, we'll grind our way through that, no problem. There we go, perfect. And so it'll drive off the edge, but it has uh, those big wheels and it's got enough torque to just kind of pull it back. But yeah, whenever the front left tire or the front right tire clips the edge, uh, that's it. So I did it very, very simply. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, no, that's good. Thank you. And stop. So that's uh, 59 seconds. So I have seen this go a lot faster. Uh, like I said, I was in the 45 second range when I was testing it, but uh, without any actual proper reading of the corners it's very random so depending on how you launch it and with the scrap mechanic physics you can see there especially when we got up here it kind of jerked back and forth a bit and uh like i said very very simple i i really should have stepped up my game i thought uh this was going to be a much easier competition and uh apparently i was wrong which is great i i really like it that uh, a lot of you guys came out and showed me what you were capable of in logic. So I'm definitely gonna have to make some more difficult challenges. All right, so we're gonna get into your designs now and uh, we're gonna see which one ultimately is the fastest. Now, I will give each one as many attempts as it takes to complete a run. I know these ones all complete runs relatively consistently. Uh, so I'll, I'll give them as many attempts as they take and I'll record the first time that they complete a run with. So we're gonna get into this one. And this one is by Blue Flame again. So here we go. We're going to line it up. Just try and center it in the box here. All right. And in three, two, one, go. This one's very quick. You can tell right off the bat, faster than mine. And uh, you can see much, much better. It turns right to where it needs to be, lines up straight, and then, uh, and then it drives accordingly. So I definitely made mine very, very random. I did it like I do a lot of the Logic Bots creations in the Logic Bots game. But uh, I've been realizing now that I'm definitely going to have to step my game. You can see there, it kind of fell off there too on the edge. And you can see it just kind of thinking its way around the corner. Very, very quick though. We're only at 30 seconds now. Oh, a little bit of a screw up there. That's okay though. And time. 35 seconds. Very, very impressive time. Uh, completely obliterates mine. So, like I said, going to have to step up my logic game. The next one we have it uh, we look over here is by Musta Sem Simpanzi. Again, I really hope I'm saying that right. If I'm not, please correct me in the comments down below. But uh, that is this robot here, and we're going to just jump up onto this track, and we're going to spawn it on the lift as well. All right, so where is the switch? I think it's on the side. Yeah, okay. So here we go. And this one, very similar to mine, uh, just with it seems like one sensor on either side to steer it. But uh, I think because the sensors are wider offset, it, it works a little bit better and uh, he's able to actually go a lot faster. Here we go, in three, two, one, go. You can see there, just much, much better at turning than mine does. And uh, those wide wheels, Again, it's the fact that it doesn't overcorrect nearly as much, right? With mine, it was overcorrecting, going into the one wall, going to the other wall, going back to the one wall, back to the other. Whereas this one, because the sensors are so far apart, it corrects itself once and then just says, oh, okay, I need to go there, done, problem solved. And you can see there, still scanning its way along. Very quick, like I said, just like the other one. Uh, gonna be a little bit slower than Blue Flame here, though. Coming up at 40 seconds and time. I got 40 seconds, very, very close. Um, faster than the time I had to qualify it. Alrighty, the third one here we have is uh, called Alp by Lord Payne. And uh, definitely, definitely 
I think I think has the most sensors. I, I'm pretty sure there wasn't any other logic bot that has many sensors. But now that I'm looking at the circuit diagram, I'm realizing some of them are just dummies. So clearly he's just uh, you know he's just trying to scare people with this tactic. He's like, look at all the sensors I used when really half of them aren't even hooked up. I mean, this one's not even on. Like, it's set to 20 and it's not even plugged in anything. So, clearly uh, just the intimidation factor. So here we go, in. Get my timer ready here. In three, two, one, go. This one, very fast. Uh, you can see there, it actually senses the corners and it sort of adjusts to the corner before it even gets close to it. So again, very similar to, uh, they, they all use the similar concept, which is turn away from the wall, but uh, it's how much you can control your error curve, as it's called. When you're dealing with robotics, oh, there we go, it does a little flop. I love how it does that, it just kind of leans back and then plops down. But when you're building anything in robotics, that's basically what you're trying to do is control your error curve. And it's the same thing when you're driving a car. You can see there, it's compensating and overcompensating time. 36 seconds still very very fast though all right so our fourth design is by mini and uh you know pretty straightforward using two sensors on either side on pistons to try and uh, sort of detect the edges and uh, we're gonna get it going here in three two one go but just like my design uh this also suffers from the overcompensation undercompensation oversteering understeering issue you can see there it kind of wobbles back and forth it doesn't just drive dead straight in the middle of the track. But I mean, most of the logic bots would do this. You'd really have to build something that would sense the contours and know how much it has to turn in order to actually make it. You can see they're very aggressive on that jump, just flying off of it, but uh, putting up a really, really good time. But even then, you can see it's still swerving back and forth, and that's what you have to eliminate if you want to make a quick robot. It is really, holy cow, it's really going bad. It wasn't that bad in the testing. And time. So I got 41 seconds on that one. Pretty quick, but uh, I think the uh, the extra swerving really, really didn't help it very much. And that's, again, the biggest issue. My logic bot was still the slowest so far at, uh, at what, 59 seconds or something like that? All right, so our final of the five creations is by sales, and that's this, uh, this creation over here. And we can see right off the bat, just got a ton of sensors and a ton of logic i'm assuming it's got different levels of steering and uh it, depending on how aggressive the corner is it will steer more or less but it also has this bar underneath it and i noticed the same thing on lord Payne's creation and a few other people's and i'm not really sure what this bar is for so maybe you guys can let me know in the comments down below what that bar was for i thought either one of two things either a it's for handling the vertical drop off or b it's for when you get close to the edge but uh regardless we're going to test this creation here and in three two one go you can see very little overcompensation with his design and that's really the name of the game is remove the overcompensation make your vehicle go quicker and uh, stop on a dime and not have any issues and just handling that vertical edge no problem very 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 fast holy cow a little bit of compensation on this uh, this top half here but that's going to be time at 24 seconds unbelievably quick i mean even faster than the wall grippers just absolutely insane but like i said he's just reading those corners perfectly and just adapting it so definitely grand champion of the world uh with with the ultimate wall riding following course robot thing I don't have a prize but anyways guys i'm definitely going to be coming up with more challenges and uh definitely go to the discord and post your suggestions in the uh, ai challenge channel there's a whole discussion about it where we talk about other potential challenges and also of the, obviously where you submit your creations i did get a few in email i downloaded those no problem but it is definitely a lot more convenient to have them all on the discord in the same location but go be a part of the conversation join up and uh, make sure you hit that like button down below and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already definitely going to be building a more complicated AI myself because clearly the uh, the competition is quite fierce and my AI just really wasn't even close to making the cut so make sure you guys post your suggestions down below and uh, go hit up the discord and as always I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see y'all next time